In today's video, I'll be sharing new stamps and dies from Spellbinder's Country Road Collection designed by Annie Williams. Hi everyone, I'm Rebecca Keppel. This new Country Road Collection from Spellbinder's has everything you need to create the cutest country scenes on your cards. Let me share the new supplies that I'll be working with today. These are the stamps and dies from the Country Road Collection that I'm going to be working with today. So the first one I wanna show you is the Welcome Sign and Sentiments stamps and dies. The dies cut out a signpost and you can customize that with all of these different stamps. There's a cupcake, a pumpkin, all kinds of different things to customize that signpost with. Next up is the country wheelbarrow dies. These dies will help you put together that wheelbarrow on the front of the card there. And these are the garden builder dies. Now these can be used both with the signpost and the wheelbarrow and the other dies that are in the Country Road collection. It's just an assortment of flowers and leaves and things to fill everything with. Now, let's use those new stamps and dies to make some cards. So first, let me show you all the pieces that come in the Country Wheelbarrow die set and how to put them together. So you can see you have all the elements to create the wheelbarrow, as well as the wheel and these little pieces that connect it. What I'd like to do here is what was actually done on the sample there is a little bit of ink blending around the side of the cardstock because a country wheelbarrow is not going to be 100% dust or dirt free. So your wheelbarrow will look a little bit more realistic if it's got a little bit of ink blending around the edges there. Use a small detailed blending brush and maybe some distress oxide ink or whatever light brown or brown ink that you have on hand that you like to use as a ink blended effect around the outside of your die cuts. These will also make things look a little bit aged, which is nice as well. You can see that the dies themselves cut some wood grain elements onto the little pieces. And all you have to do to put this wheelbarrow together is use a little bit of liquid glue for the side panel. And there's that kind of hinge that will hold those two together, as well as the other side panel just goes behind the back there. So now you have the basic elements of the wheelbarrow, and now it's time to work on the wheel. So the wheel has these elements that will hold the wheel on both sides. There are little shades of the wheel here. I decided to cut them out of silver mirror cardstock thinking they were kind of a frame for the wheel. I'm not sure if they're a frame or a shadow. So do what you like and think is best. There's also, there are a few more pieces here that help the wheel stay in place on the wheelbarrow. So it's a little tricky to kind of place the axle through both sides, but you can use a little bit of liquid glue to hold it in place. And if you don't get it perfect, my alignment ends up being a little wonky and a little bit too far to the right, but it won't be noticeable in the end. These are the flowers from the Country Builder dies. There are a couple of layerable flowers, or you can use some of these flowers individually with just some centers. I'm using an embellishment tool. That's my favorite way to pick up those tiny little flower centers and adhere them down with a little drop of a liquid glue in the center of the flowers. So definitely do all of that die cutting and adhering together first so that you have all these things to place inside the wheelbarrow. For my background, I ink blend a sky with some Distress Oxide ink. I like to use tumbled glass for the sky. And then for the grass itself, I either like to use Twisted Citron or this time a little bit of mowed lawn. And I will cut that down to four by five and a quarter so I can mat it on some of the new peach cardstock from Spellbinders, which I'll link to down in the YouTube description box below the video. I just really love this new color. And I decided to pop up the wheelbarrow. That's going to give me some space to tuck these leaves, stems, and flowers inside. So some I'll have hanging over towards the back. Some will go straight down into the wheelbarrow. Just have fun 
creating a whole bouquet of leaves and stems. I like to do all those leaves and stems first and then add the flowers on top. So I have two different green colored cardstocks that I cut a bunch of different stems out of. That gives me an assortment looking element that I then can just add little droplets of liquid glue and place the flowers on top. And you can see I have three different colors of flowers. That really helps to give a natural or realistic look to this grouping or bouquet of flowers because they're not all the same color. It just looks like a bunch of wildflowers that were picked and put inside the wheelbarrow. And I just love how they come together so easily once you have everything die cut. Okay, for the next card, we will use the signpost. So again, I'm going to ink blend a sky with some tumbled glass. This time I'm definitely using a lighter hand with the twisted citron on the bottom there. And I'm doing this card in a vertical format. These are the different signs that you can die cut. I decided to go with the little daisy. And again, on the stamp, there are many different options as well. Instead of doing the little die cut element, you can could put the cupcake, you could put the pumpkin. There's so many different little stamps that you could use for your sign and the sentiments will go along with them. So there's sentiments for the fall, for the holidays, for all kinds of different uh, varieties of themes of card and for your sign. So here are all the little elements that you can put together. Now when I look at a sample on dies, I always think is it really possible to create a card like that? Like, is it going to be very, very difficult to use these dies to make this card or can I replicate it myself? And I'm here to tell you that this, these dies are made to create the look that is on the front of the dies. So I decided to go with something very similar. I created a fence. My sign says just for you and I'm layering one sign on top of another, that little gray background just gives it a nice element of dimension. These little hanging posts allow you to attach it to the fence post there. And I cut all those little elements out of gold mirror cardstock. I love the way that looked in the sample on the dies. And I decided to pop up this first fence post here. These are the smaller of the posts. You can see they can be used to hang the sign rather than that gold element that I have. I cut those hanging elements off and then I'm using the longer pieces in one direction glued down flat underneath the post that I popped up and then some smaller pieces in a slightly different direction. So we're looking at the corner of a fenced in area. So I don't know if I got these angles all right or if this even makes sense to you, but this was what made sense to me as far as creating a fenced in area with a signpost that I'm then going to decorate further. Those little black die cut pieces are the little elements that attach the sign to the sign post. I just trimmed them down because I didn't want them sticking out as far as I had them sticking out. Then I flipped over the card and cut off the excess elements of the fence there that just were hanging over the card once that was all dry and I knew it wasn't going to move around. Next up, I have some little die cuts from the Country Builder die set again. And this time I'm using an even smaller blending brush to get just around the edges and inside some of these tiny little die cuts because when you do this little bit of ink blending, you will be surprised at how much it really helps those die cuts to stand out and look a little bit more realistic. So just a tiny bit of ink will aid your wheelbarrow or add a little bit of depth and dimension to your greenery on your cards. And I love how easy that is to do and the effect that it has is really nice. Again, I have a couple of different green pieces for my background. Then I have this little silhouette of a cat here that's going to cover up kind of the base of that plant that looked like it was just coming out of nowhere. And then I have 
these leaves to add to this plant over here. And again, just a little bit more ink blending. If you're feeling like the die cuts just look a little bit plain or just a little unnatural. So you can see that shading is so easy to do. I'm not doing anything special or thinking about light sources or anything like that, but I'm just adding that for a little bit of dimension and depth to those pieces. Same thing with the little tulips. The tulips are two pieces that go on top of each other. I used a tiny sliver of foam tape in between them just to give, again, a little bit extra dimension and pop those up. So those tulips have leaves and stems as well. I like to put the leaves and stems in place first and then pop the tulip in, or sometimes put the head of the tulip on and then put the stem right underneath. So there's a lot of ways to go about this and to add these tulips to your card, but look at how cute this country scene looks. I just can't get over how easy it was to make with all these perfect little die cut pieces. I don't know about you, but I really enjoy the look of country scenes on cards, but I struggle creating those scenes. These stamps and dies make it so easy. I'd love to hear if you're a scene builder on your cards. Let me know in the comments below. YouTube thinks you might be interested in checking out this video next. As always, I want to thank you so much for stopping by and spending time with me today. Please stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you again soon.